12 weeks have come and gone, and we are here at Ash County High School for the season finale. And also senior night at Ash County High School for more Friday night football as it is the final game of the regular season for both squads when the Ash County Huskies host the 1-9 Elkin Bucking Elks. Good evening, I'm Tyler Rash alongside Nathan Ham. Glad to have you tuned in for what is the regular season finale for Ash County Huskies. Glad to have you in on what should be an exciting matchup to close out the regular season. The last obstacle in the way for the Huskies to lock up that uh, hopeful number two spot in the conference and a uh, good playoff berth here, or a good playoff spot for next week here in the 2A division. Nate, what are you looking forward to most as tonight's contest gets ready to get started? Well, you definitely want to see the Huskies bounce back from a tough defeat against Starmount. Uh, knocked out any chance we had of uh, sharing a conference title. Of course, East Wilkes took care of business anyway, so it didn't matter. But, uh, you know, for Ash, you know, they really wanted to beat Starmount after last season. Just didn't happen. But tonight they've got a chance to close out the regular season on a high note with a win. And as you said, uh, maybe even earn a home playoff game. The way the brackets may shake out, Ash could very well uh, get a home game and be right back here at Husky Stadium. So this game certainly means a lot for, for the Huskies. And for Elkin, they would just like to try to end the season with a win. It's been a tough year, but uh, the Elks, they've just struggled all year long and uh, maybe come up here and play a little bit of sp uh, spoiler for the Huskies. Ash County getting ready to take the field here on senior night. The seniors were recognized just a few minutes ago. They'd like to send them off with a big-time victory tonight as their last home game possibly here at ACHS in West Jefferson. So the Huskies looking to close out things strong and finish up with the winning record. Currently sit at five and five overall, four and two in Mountain Valley play. And Nate, you talked about the struggles that have just been there all season long for Elk and they come into this one at one and nine. Yeah, they've uh, kind of struggled doing a little bit of everything, passing, running, and defense. It's just been a struggle all year long. And uh, the only bright spot they had, they did beat North Wilkes, so they do have a conference win to show for it this year. But a uh, tough non-conference slate of games did not let them get any wins either. So uh, right now staring at a one-win season, certainly not something you're used to coming from that program. And we see the Huskies taking the field in a little different fashion. There they finally get the crowd riled up. It is a good, loud home crowd here tonight at Ash County High School as they're out here to support the seniors and this Husky team in full force in what could be the final home game of the 2015 campaign. Of course, last year we know the Huskies pretty much were able to run through the Mountain Valley Conference. This year ran into a difficult team last week, though, in Starmount. And, Nate, I think it's easy to say that Starmount uh, kind of has Ash's number here in the Mountain Valley Conference. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. The Huskies have struggled with them off and on pretty much uh, since Starmount did join the conference. And uh, last week, just a, just a really tough game, just a couple of plays, pretty much the entire difference in that ball game. And, uh, you know, Starmount really wanted that win too, and uh, Ash just could not quite stop that rushing attack. And hopefully tonight that defense can be a little bit more fired up here to try to stop helping. And we are underway. It's a low line drive kick, waiting for it to roll out of bounds, which it finally does, which draws the flag. So Ash can take the good field position starting out on their 35. And before we do get into the first play from scrimmage, we would like to thank our communications partner, Carolina West Wireless, reminding you that 4G LTE is here. And Nate, as the Huskies get set to take the field, talk about a return for a couple of guys here tonight for the Huskies. Good to see um, Sky Sullivan and also, of course, Judd Price out there for the Ash County Huskies. Yeah, two key parts of this offense. Uh, you know, Ash has needed those two guys all year long, especially uh, the way the Huskies have tried to improve on running the ball here lately. Uh, Scott Sullivan getting hurt in that East Wilkes game was certainly a big setback there. And a good hard snap count right off the bat from your junior quarterback, Colin Ellis. Draws a defender offsides. That was number 40 there on the left side of that line of defense. So, Nate, with that being said, welcome back to Mr. Judd Price. And we see there he'll be our K&K &K stitch and screen player to watch. Of course, very good numbers for the junior wide out. And that's with two games missed. He's been out the last two. There we see the bobbled snap by Ellis, and he can't recover. Yeah, we've seen a few high snaps the last couple of games. I'm not sure what the difference is here. It's been uh, – been that way the last couple of weeks at least. Didn't see that a lot early in the season, but there it's going to cost the Huskies a couple yards at least. That's going to make it quickly here for the Huskies. Third down and 11 yards. 
excuse me, second and 11. Ellis in the gun, looking to take a flight with this air raid offense. Fly downfield and making the catch is Mason McNeil. Laid out completely for that catch and was able to scoop it up and gets it into Elkin territory quickly. The Huskies in business with a nice first down. Yeah, I would expect to see the Huskies try to take advantage of the middle of the field. Going to be a lot of space there left from the Elkin defense, and I'm sure Coach Hanson and his offensive staff knew that going into this game. This time, nope. Ellis keeps it himself on the option and nowhere to go again. Runs out of real estate, and he's going to be dropped for a loss on the play. He'll lose about five yards. Like Bo Burgess in there on that tackle. We'll see him uh, later lining up at quarterback for the Elks, but on that play, able to bring down the ball carrier. And Nate, as we see this Husky offense on the field, we'll take a quick look at our Ash County Ford keys to tonight's game. And of course, last week the story was not being able to finish those drives for Ash County, and they gave up two big plays the opposite way, and that made the difference in the ball game. Yeah, that really was the key to the game. Ash just could not capitalize on its red zone possessions. There's a quick pass. Welcome back to Judd Price, and this one going to go for nothing, though. Dropped at the line of scrimmage and say no gain. It's going to bring up third and about 15 for the Ash County Huskies on their own 47-yard line. So there are the Ash County four keys to the game. Of course, limit the big plays, finish the drives. And I think key here tonight, Nate, is the Huskies going to have to get a little jump start on offense. They didn't score last week, we know, until, uh, what, 48 seconds remaining in the contest. You can't afford to do that again here this week. Yeah, it's uh, certainly going to be helpful that they've got all, uh, most of all of their key parts back tonight. Uh, see if it can make at least a little bit of a difference. You'd like to think it certainly will. Just, uh, just a struggle all around last week. Third and long pass is caught by Kissinger out of the backfield. And the senior's going to be close to a first down. We'll see what they spotted. Maybe just a yard or so shy. Good to see uh, Kissinger getting in on the action here early on senior night. As we see, John Rebus going to be subbing in for him. And inside of the Elkin 40, I expect to see the Huskies leave that offense on the field here on fourth and short. Yeah, don't need too much here. Would not be surprised to see Ash. Uh, maybe a little bit of quarterback option here with Colin Ellis. But uh, also, hey, they might hand it off to John Revis. He's, he's been a good little ball carrier filling in for Sullivan. Stacked receivers to the left and right. Ellis going to keep it himself. Slings it out here to McNeil at the last second, and that ball is incomplete, and that will be an early turnover on downs for the Ash County Huskies. So, the struggles they experienced last week on offense as far as getting points on the board and sustaining drives. Looks like maybe Nate has carried over into this week, at least on this first possession for the Huskies. And Elkin has to feel pretty good, able to get off the field on that fourth down, see if their offense can put them ahead for a change. They've really played from behind in about every game they've been in this year, so it would be nice to see them able to move the ball and certainly happy the defense able to shut Ash down on that uh, quick opening drive. They'll be rewarded with some nice field position as well, starting this drive, their first on offense from their own 39-yard line. What do you expect to see from this offense here tonight on the opposite side for the Elks? Uh, they, they do like to spread it out a little bit. They like to move the ball around. They will run it, and they'll also throw a little bit. Bo Burgess, has, uh, he's been banged up a little bit this year. If you ask any Elk and fan or coach, I uh, feel like he's just missed a little bit of time and played hurt quite a bit too, so he's really battled it out out there. I would say... Uh, just look for him to make some plays from that quarterback spot. He'll he'll throw it and uh, run it himself. Let's see the penalty marker going down. That's against the Huskies. So they'll replay the down. It's going to be about first and two after the ball is marked off. And gone are the weapons we've seen here in the past, Nate. And uh, who's the guy to look out for here tonight? Is it Burgess? Uh, you certainly see him at the quarterback spot. And uh, Will Altmuller, a uh, very uh, big guy in the backfield. He'll get quite a few carries. and. Uh, he's probably a little bit more known for his baseball acumen, but uh, filling in very nicely here on the football team. He'll, I believe he's the leading rusher this year as well. Under centers, Burgess play action, airing it out deep and incomplete, and there comes in the flag. That may be in the way of pass interference against Simon Houck. And Jalen Mays there, the intended receiver, did not see a whole lot there, but looked like the, uh, the officials certainly uh, thought the Huskies impeded his progress there with the pass interference foul. And there we see it come down officially against the Ash County Huskies. So here early on, another 15-yard penalty. It goes against Ash County. And now Elkin's really in business here, Nate, all the way to the Husky 38-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Yeah, Elkin hasn't really had to do a whole lot. The, the penalties have just moved them down the field for them. But uh, see if they can 
uh, start moving the ball, actually making some offensive plays. First and 10 on the Husky, 38. Here comes the handoff. That time number 21, Hayden Brooks, just a sophomore, and we see it up and down the roster, Nate, and a lot of youth on this Elkin squad this year. Yeah, they'll certainly be a force to reckon with here in a few years, but yeah, just uh, not a whole lot of experience on this team. And uh, certainly the, the last year's team had a whole lot of talent and speed on that team. Uh, all those kids graduated and uh, definitely going to be classified as a rebuilding year, probably next year as well for the Elks. Pick up about five from Brooks. Hold everything. And that's going to be offsides against the Huskies. So Ash being flagged three times on this drive, Nate. That's going to be right out of first down for Elkin. I believe they're going to say second down in less than a yard. And now it's inside the Ash County 30 down to the 28-yard line, just shy of it to be exact. Bit of a sluggish start for the Huskies on both ends of the field here. Offensively not able to get a whole lot going. And here defensively just uh, – Self-inflicted wounds helping uh, the Elks move down the field. In the gun this time. Handoff goes to Altmuller, trying to bounce it outside, has some space, makes one guy miss, and he gets it down into red zone territory. A nice carry there out of shotgun, able to pick up easily that first down and quite a bit more. It's going to be inside the Husky red zone. So the Huskies with their backs against the wall on defense now. It's spotted at the 18-yard line, first and 10 again for the Bucking Elks. First time they've been able to get it without penalty yardage helping them, but still all in all, they're keeping this drive alive right now. As they get a fresh set of downs to work with in red zone territory, we'll see how they respond. In the gun for August. Two backs, and this play's going nowhere as the handoff went to Wagner, tried to dance, dance it out to the right side that time. Nothing doing. Read it nicely by that Husky defense. A yeah, nice pursuit inside, making sure that run play going to go nowhere. Actually loses two or three yards on that. Nice stand by the Husky defense. Wagner just a sophomore himself. You can see a lot of young guys on this team there. Of course, Bo Bogus. Just a sophomore, but nice size there. And they got to like his potential, especially there standing six feet tall, 165 pounds as a sophomore. Yeah, that's what you'd like to see from a quarterback, good size and good athleticism. Quick swing pass to the outside, looking for some space is Christian, and it's not going anywhere. Hudler putting on the finishing touches. Christian, one of the few seniors out there that uh, will get a lot, of the, a lot of looks on offense. Burgess certainly likes to look his way between him and uh, Altmuller. That's pretty much uh, the senior leadership that they have out there. So now they're going to be facing a third and long situation. Still on the 18, ball on the left hash for the Elks. See how they line it up here. Third down and nine. Rolling out to the far side is Burgess. He's looking to the corner of the end zone, and he was looking for Christian, but over the outstretched hands of the intended target, that goes down as an incomplete pass, and now it's going to bring up fourth and nine for the Elks. Senior Garrett Miller in there on the coverage. Looks like Christian did have a step, though. The throw just not accurate. So now. I always miss these. Fourth down. Nine to go. Not sure about a kicking game here for Elkin. At this point, it'd be about a 36-yarder. Looks like they're going to leave that offensive unit out onto the field as we see Burgess stay in there to take the snap. They'll line up four wide in the shotgun. Rolling out to the far side is Burgess. Looking downfield on the run. Has his man, but that is tipped. Tristan Jones deflects that one into the ground, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. A nice stand from that Husky defense. Yeah, Jones really might have saved the day on that. Jalen Mays was open, and that would have definitely been the first down. Might have been able to turn that upfield, get into the end zone. But uh, Tristan Jones, good job, good heady play from the linebacker spot, able to get a hand on it. Yeah, and you called it. That saved six almost assuredly. And now the Husky offense will be looking to – Fix things here on offense, straighten things out, I should say, as they start their second offensive possession. Last time it stalled on them just into Elkin territory where he resulted in turnover on Dons. Ellis decked as he throws, 
And man, he felt the heat that time, barely able to get the pass off, just short of the intended target, Mason McNeil. And nice pursuit there from that defense on that play from Elkin. That was a good pass rush there. Uh, Jackson Carter back there in coverage almost picked that one off, but Ellis got just enough on that throw to get it over his head. Elkin standing toe-to-toe -to, -toe to this point here with the Huskies. Got to be impressed with their play. Ash looking to get it together here. Second down and 10. Ellis firing downfield again. This one out of the hands of McNeil. Some pretty good defense being applied by Jonah Christian. But McNeil just couldn't find the handle. Yeah, McNeil had that one right, hit him right in the hands. It was a good throw, but uh, the senior wideout just not able to hang on to it. So now quickly, Huskies facing third and 10. Still on their own 18-yard line. Getting the signal in from the near sideline. We still have yet to see Sky Sullivan into the ball game. We have heard he's been cleared to play tonight. Expect him to get some action. It's been all Revis so far. Ellis, plenty of time to throw and delivers a great pass to McNeil. There he goes. He's inside the 40, the 30. He will be drugged down. And how about that catch by Mason McNeil? That was a great route, great throw, and an even better catch. And uh, how about Jonah Christian sewing some wheels, able to run Mason McNeil down there, but uh, still a huge play for Ash, just what they needed to get this offense going. Well, hold everything, Nate, as we see back down the other way. A penalty marker was down around the line of scrimmage, just behind it, actually. And it looks like this one's going to be going against the Huskies, probably in the area of holding. So just when they get things rolling, now they're going to say false start against the Huskies, so it backs them up five more, makes it what was already difficult in third and 10. Now it's even more so at third down and 15. But how about that route there from Mace McNeil? It was kind of a go route up the sideline, and as you said, it a perfect pass from Ellis. Yeah, that was a well-designed play. Just unfortunate that uh, uh, the penalty there kind of negated that one. Let's see if they can pull something off here on third and 15. So it takes back about a 40, 50 yard gainer that time. Four wide set, third and 15. Ellis inside his own five as he fires it deep downfield. Looking for Price, he's got him. And they're not going to catch him. He turns on the afterburners. Adios, see you later. 10-5, touchdown. The Price is right. And welcome back to Judd Price. How about that 87-yard strike? You can't beat that. Welcome back indeed. That's exactly what the Huskies have been missing, that extra weapon for Colin Ellis to use. And right there, perfect throw on the money. And uh, hopefully no flags on this one. This one's going to stand. No penalty markers down, as we saw it there on the Mountain Outfitters replay from our sideline cam. What a throw just over the defense there. They had two men back, and Price, good heady play there. The awareness to make that catch, and once he does that, that's the hard part. The easy part's for him, getting that separation and uh, cruising into the end zone, and the PAT attempt is up, and it is good from Kendall Richardson. So add one more, it's seven to nothing. Ash County Huskies here at the 445 mark. They are the first ones to find pay dirt as we take a look at that. Ash County forward drive to the end zone. Yeah, three plays, 82 yards. Uh, you know, in the past plays further than the yards you traveled, you had a few penalties on that drive, but still nonetheless, 87-yard pass from Ellis to Price. And a nice start after that uh, tough first drive. A good bounce back from the Huskies and take an early lead here. Yeah, all it takes is one play with this quick strike air raid offense of the Huskies, and they show it off there with the 87-yard pass and catch. And, man, had to think a little bit maybe a little rusty for Price and then also for Sullivan, but uh, so far we get to see Sullivan. But uh, Price showing no side effects from being out of action here the last two weeks from that suspension. Yeah, we've seen him do a nice job getting open in that big pass play. Uh, certainly shows the Husky fans he's back and he's ready to go. Huskies will line up to boot this one off deep. After the touchdown, as we see on the Miller Insurance scoreboard, the first to put some points there in that column. And that's big for the Huskies, Nate. That's, uh, you know, go back last week, only put up six against Starmount. And uh, just their second touchdown in the last uh, what, four or five, qu five quarters now here for the Ash County Huskies. Yeah, it's good to see the offense uh, start playing a little bit better here. And uh, for, for Elkin, it's not something they want to see. They don't want to see the Huskies get it going. But uh, still, nonetheless, you know, Ash is capable of uh, doing that on any drive when they're out there. So Elkin's got to keep an eye on that as well. Kickoff went into the end zone for a touchback. So we'll see Elkin come out now with a long field to work with on there. 
Second offensive possession, first and 10 on their 20. We'll see if Burgess can lead his team and answer the call as they trail seven to nothing here in the early going. Head off goes to the outside. Brooks has some space and a good job there getting some contact on him by Matthew Greer, forcing him out of bounds after he picks up about five on the play. Second and five now coming up for the Elks from the 25 yard line. So make it second down and five. Ball placed on the left hash mark. For the Huskies, we know it's not going to be meant to be, Nate, for a third consecutive Mountain Valley Conference title. But still, you know, this is a team that definitely has improved, and that's what we expected and wanted. If you hear Coach Hampton talk, you know, very proud of what his guys have accomplished this year despite not going to get that uh, Mountain Valley Conference title. Yeah, it was uh, certainly a rebuilding mode at the beginning of the year, but uh, they really picked it up as the season went on. And, uh, you know, they win tonight, another winning season and uh, a playoff bid. So certainly Husky fans have to be really pleased with how this season's ended up. There we just saw a nice pass play. Enough to get that first down. It was a gain of six. They only needed five. So it's a fresh set of downs now for Elkin on their own 31. They've been able to move the ball here in the early going against the Ash County defense. Alt Mueller, no, it's the option toss to the outside. And lowering his shoulder is Brooks. Not gonna get much there though, about a yard or two on the first down carry. Garrett Miller in on the stop, one of the many seniors here on this Ash County team. And talk about guys who have improved. He's one that's, uh, you really gotta admire his improvement here on defense, especially for this Ash County team in the secondary. Yeah, Ash County lost a whole lot of secondary help last year. And Garrett Miller has filled in very nicely out on the edge. And uh, he's another guy that's just gotten better as the season went on. And between him and Simon Houck, they've gotten some really good cornerback play. There's another handoff, and this one's going nowhere. Almost going for an arm bar was Richardson as he takes him down with authority in the backfield. Yeah, great job there from Richardson. And, uh, you know, we've seen that a couple times now. These Husky defensive linemen just getting upfield really quick and blowing up plays in the backfield. Alex Richardson, big guy there for the Huskies. He and Luis Ramos coming at you off the edge. That's pretty imposing. Yeah, that's not what a opposing defense wants to see at all. That's a lot of speed and a lot of quickness and size coming at you in a hurry. So now this puts Elkin in a third and 13. As the pass is complete, now looking to swing it back to the middle, but nowhere to go. A big hit there laid on him from behind. And that's going to bring up a fourth and long and an obvious punting situation for the Elks after the catch from Jalen Mays. Good job by Ramos there recognizing uh, the play was coming back his way. He backtracks and plants the ball carrier. You know, you throw the receiver on the outside, he's not hoping to come back inside and get hit by a defensive end. Bring on the punter. Gets it off. Could have been blocked there almost. We'll take a kind Elkin roll. And we'll be blown dead at the 38-yard line. And we'll see this Ash County offense go back to work first and 10. 2.09 left here in the first quarter. See if Ash can build onto this lead they had after a, a very quick drive last time out. You know, Elkin hopes to defend the pass a little bit better this time at least. But uh, that Ash County offense now back to almost full strength. Uh, it's tough to do. First down for the Huskies. Four wide set. Ellis joined by Revis in the backfield. Ellis looking across the middle, finds McNeil. He's got the first down and then some. He's in Elkin territory, turning it up before he's finally going to be stopped by Altmuller. But he'll switch fields and gets it down to Elkin's 38-yard line. Nice gain there for the Huskies. McNeil able to get wide open on that. Ellis found him easily. And McNeil does the rest just like that. Ash deep into Elkin territory already. Great job there after the fact by McNeil. Yards after catch, always a, something nice you like to see from that offense. With these big play receivers get a heavy dose of it here at Ash County. Quickly back to the air again goes Ellis. He's wanting it all, has his man McNeil. Can't hang on to it, in and out of his hands and bobbles it. That's just a drop pass. He's got to have a little more awareness. Yeah, that was an easy touchdown off the board there. He had that one wide open. He may have been uh, seeing that end zone a little bit too quick on that one, but he had that one easily. Yeah, he's wanting that end zone here early on senior night. Will not be on that one. 
as it falls incomplete. Ball still at the 38, second down and 10 with 140 remaining in this opening quarter. Friday night football now, he'll find McNeil. He does hang on to this one, tries to make a cutback and just can't get away. He will be stopped. Nice job there on the ankle tackle by Jalen Mays. Picks up about five when it's all said and done. Bring up a third and five situation for Ash County on the 33 yard line of Elkins. They look to pick up another first down, keep this drive alive. See how they line it up. You'll see trips to the far side of the field. Neal, Thompson, Halk, Price with that one on one on the near side. See if he goes his way again. He's going to the far side of the field. Pass is caught. And a nice job there by Simon Halk. Gets him the first down and then some. They're in red zone territory now. Yeah, we've seen Halk, just a sophomore, getting more involved in the passing game as the seasons went along. And there a nice little route gets wide open. Ellis finds him over the middle. Under a minute now as the clock is, will reset. Seven to nothing Huskies. And We'll see if they can convert in red zone territory. Something we really saw them struggle with last week at Star, against Starmount, excuse me, at home. Stepping up strong, makes a nice throw to Price. He cuts it back, still on his feet, looking for the end zone, and he's going to be stopped just a couple of yards shy. But how about those moves after the catch from Judd Price? Yeah, another throw right on target from Ellis, and Judd Price doing a whole lot of that work himself. Carries a couple of defenders all the way down to the, looks like about the two-yard line. We'll see if Ash wants to stick with the air attack here, or maybe they uh, pull it down and go in on the ground here. How about that throw delivered from Colin Ellis under duress that time, and still able to deliver a dart right on the money to Judd Price. Here we go, first and goal from the two. Price, or excuse me, Ellis up the middle and rolls his way in. Touchdown, Huskies. Nine seconds left in the first quarter. That's a great way to end the quarter. Extra point pending, but still, that's a, a nice close of the quarter for the Huskies after a tough opening drive. Ash, our last two drives have looked uh, very good out there. Yeah, much better efficiency-wise for the Huskies in these last two drives. Caps that one off just like last time with six on the board, pending the extra point. There's a high snap into the hands of Richardson. Hey, we saw this a few weeks ago. Can make it happen again? Lobs it to the end zone, but incomplete. Trying to find there Jake Richardson in the back of the end zone. We also see a penalty marker down right around the goal line. And not sure what they've thrown this one on. And that's going to be against the Huskies. An ineligible receiver, but it will be declined. So the extra point attempt is no good. And the Huskies will have to settle for six as we look at that. Ash County forward drive to the end zone. Yeah, six plays, 62 yards, took exactly two minutes off the clock. Capped off there with Colin Ellis scrambling in from two yards out. Give the Huskies a 13-zip lead here. Just uh, nine seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, great way to close out the period here for the Ash County Huskies and get them a little bit of separation at the close of the first. 9.1 seconds, as you said, 13 zip in favor of the host, Ash County Huskies. Showing what they can do on offense here these last two drives. Yeah, just uh, exactly what the Huskies wanted to do after last week, try to bounce back, get that offense going. And so far tonight, after that first drive, it's been exactly what they'd like to do out there. Richardson on to kick this one away for the Huskies after another score. That's another nice kick. Not quite as deep as we're accustomed to seeing. We'll be fielded around the 14-yard line, and he's not getting anything else. The Huskies sniff that one out. Garrett Miller, Tristan Jones. And who else was in on that one, Nate? Uh, several guys there just uh, kind of surprised Jalen Mays let it roll that far. Then he picked it up as a pretty well-placed kick there from Kendall Richardson, just able to kill it enough to where it couldn't roll out of bounds. But uh, Mays picks it up pretty late and pays the price for it. Wow. Richardson, I believe, was in on that stop as well. Nothing doing there. Now Elkin have their backs against it inside their own 20, down at their 14-yard line to start this drive and what will likely be the final play of the first quarter. They'll hand it off. And Altmuller finding some space there. Gets out 
as he spins around close to that 20-yard line, and that will do it for the first. Huskies taking flight with this air raid offense. It's 13 to nothing after one. We'll be back on Sky Zone Sports with more Friday Night Football from Ash County High School. When it comes to insuring your home, business, automobiles, and property, you want an agency you can depend on. Miller Insurance has been serving this region for more than 60 years and are proud to now represent Everett Cash Mutual, which specializes in insuring farm property, equipment, livestock, and more. Before you renew your insurance policies, give us a call at 336-246-7151 or come see us in downtown West Jefferson. Miller Insurance is proud to be your hometown insurance agency that supports our hometown teams. Little's Health and Fitness began in 1981. We are a 24-7, full-service, family-friendly fitness center with the finest equipment from Life Fitness, Hammer Strength, and Body Masters, as well as a great staff to help you get started. We have a 22-piece cardio area, so waiting is rarely a problem. We offer group classes for all levels, an extensive array of weights and machines, perfect for the beginner to advanced. We also have meal replacement shakes, tanning, dressing rooms with private showers, personal trainers, and child care is also available. The teams have switched sides, and we're back with second quarter action on Friday Night Football. Senior night at ACHS as the Huskies are entertaining the Elkin Bucking Elks in a Mountain Valley Conference showdown. Huskies up here 13 to nothing as we start the second period of play. A bit of a sluggish start for Ash County, but closed that quarter with emphatic fashion. We see the delay handoff going there to Altmuller, trying to find some room on that right side, and it's not working for him. Yeah, this Husky rush defense doing a very nice job. Unlike last week, gave up a few big plays, but here so far tonight, it's uh, just been two or three yards here and there, a couple stops behind the line, but uh, this, this run defense playing quite a bit better this week. I'll get you right after this play. Bring up third down and four quickly here in the second period for Elkin. Looking to go to the airs. Burgess just lobs it up, and that one's going out of bounds. Nowhere near the mark on that throw. Yeah, didn't really have much open over that way either. Looks like Wade Wagner, one of the receivers over there, just uh, not a whole lot to throw to. And the Huskies, nice job defensively, going to force another punt. So it'll be fourth down and four. Ball just across the 20-yard line. Punter standing back in his own six yard line. Good snap. Good high kick. Little bounce. Mishandled there by Matthew Greer. He's racing back for it and he's not going to get to it. Elkins got it and they're on the move. Will be knocked down, but the officials blew it dead. And maybe a little bit of lapse in judgment from uh, Matthew Greer not reading that one well and then didn't take the best of routes to try to recover the football. It's a tough break there from uh, the young man. Not, uh, not the normal punt returner back there, but he's been there last couple of weeks. Uh, but on that play, certainly looked like it just went right through his hands. And Elkin on the spot with that uh, recovery. That looked like Kendall Freeman able to get down there and scoop that one up. And Elkin, the best field position they've had all night to start a drive, see if they can uh, punch one into the end zone. So Husky defense quickly back to work. Elkin lining up in the gun is Burgess. He'll hand it off to... Alton Mueller makes a couple of nice moves and picks up about five, six yards on the play. Carey takes it right down on the 30-yard line. Mueller on that carry stopped by Ben Brown. Ben Brown on the stop defensively for the Ash County Huskies. Up, still with about four yards Gain of six as he gets it to the 30. He's been able to get into Husky territory here tonight. Of course, this drive after the fumble on the punt return. Just a counter handoff that time to Altmuller. This time it is going nothing though, stuffed by a pack of Huskies. Tristan Jones leading the charge. Loss of a yard, so we'll have third down and five upcoming for the Bucking Elks. Back to back, nice plays defensively for this Ash County team. Got to think, though, this is going to be four down territory this deep in the Husky area for the Bucking Elks. Now they line up in an I formation. He's in a lot of different looks here tonight, mixing it up offensively. You see the handoff trying to get it to the stretch. 
And Brooks will be stood up, being forced back, and man, the Huskies read that one to perfection. And the pack gets to him once again. Yeah, we saw Alex Richardson in there, among others. Uh, but great job there from the, pretty much the whole defense on that. Read that from the start. And uh, Hayden Brooks there had absolutely no chance to get any yards on the edge. Lost around a yard on that play, though, spot it. So fourth and six. Big play here early in this ball game. See if they can convert, keep this drive alive. Fourth down and six, ball in the 33. Looking to go for the air and behind his intended man, and that's going to fall incomplete. It's a turnover on downs. The Huskies do their job. Yeah, Burgess with just a bad throw on that. Jalen Mays was wide open on the little short route, but uh, that throw well behind the receiver, and Ash able to dodge a bullet after uh, fumbling that punt. So the Huskies back on the field on offense once again. Pretty good starting spot on their own 32. First down. See if they can make it three in a row on their offensive possessions after being thwarted on their first offensive series. Four wide set for the Huskies. Sky Sullivan into the game in the backfield for Ash County. Throw across the middle, nice toss, and McNeil's got it out across the 50, the 55, and, or excuse me, 45, still on his feet. No, they can't wrap him up at the 20, 10, 5, and touchdown. How about those moves from Mason McNeil as he cruises into the end zone? Yeah, what a beautiful play on that. And you know the senior happy to get into the end zone there. Just a great throw, great play all around. But a late flag is back on the field. Oh, man, and they may bring another one back against the Huskies. And they, indeed they will. It's going to be a blocking penalty against the Huskies down at the 46-yard line. Oh, man, hate to see that one going to be coming back, but indeed it will. This Husky crowd none too pleased with the call. I'm not so sure that I like it myself, but nonetheless, the officials saw enough to make the call. Blocking the back was called. Against Ash County, they'll still have the first down as they'll get some forward progress. There'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so Ash County still in good shape here. First down on their own 46-yard line. So not all is lost, but the touchdown is. So it stays 13 to nothing. Here at the 9.03 mark. Full wide set again for the Ash County Huskies, Ellis. Nice ball down the middle, but over the head of Simon Houck, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Going for the deep ball again, staying aggressive right now are the Huskies. They see something they think they have a mismatch with, and that Elkins secondary looking to take advantage of it here on this drive. Throw off just a little bit there from Ellis, or that would have been six there. Simon Houck did his job, had to step on the defender. Yeah, the, the Ash offense certainly looking deep downfield, and as you said, they've got a mismatch there. Every time they've went downfield almost, Ash has been wide open. So certainly something Colin Ellis and uh, the coaching staff see, and I, I expect them to keep going after it. There's a throw across the middle. This one off the mark, though, looking in the way of Mason McNeil cutting across. And that's going to bring up another third and long for the Ash County Huskies after the, another incomplete pass. Third down and 10 for the Huskies on their own 46. See if they can keep this drive moving along. Well, that's got to be tough, though, the Huskies there. You had, what, 12 points pulled off the board here, two touchdowns already in this ball game. Yeah, Elkin really dodging a bullet so far. Ash just really shooting themselves in the foot and uh, taking points off the board with uh, some key miscues out there. And they were going to see another flag fly. That's going to go against Elkin, however, so in the favor of the Huskies. That'll get them five more yards. Makes this much more manageable now, third and five situation. What are you drawing up if you're Coach Hampton? I, I still expect them to keep looking over the middle, especially deep down the field. It's uh, really there for the taking for these wide receivers. And, uh, you know, every time Colin drops back, Hampton's hoping he remembers, you know, you're a great athlete. If it's not there, just run it. Third and five, tight formation here, and a throw from Ellis. This one's off the mark, however, and on comes the punting unit. So the Huskies can't keep it rolling on this drive. Stopped at their own 49, fourth down and five. Coach Hampton's not going to take any chances right around midfield. He's going to have McNeil drop back and boot this one away. 
So Elkin doing their job on defense with the help of a call there. Making the stop, so fourth and five. Low snap, McNeil recovers, and he's going to go for it. He's got the first down. Hey, he's got a lot more inside the 30, the 20. The blockers are there, 10, 5, and look at him just waltz into the end zone. How about that play on fourth and five? What execution on that fake punt. I tell you, I don't know if I've seen a better fake punt than that in a long time. Not only did he just absolutely fool the whole Buck and Elk return team, but uh, his team just blocking all out down the field. You couldn't have done that much better than what Mason McNeil did. So how about that as we look at that on the Mountain Outfitters replay? 50-plus yard run there from Mason McNeil after the fake punt. 51 yards. And he really can do it all there. He shows off his running ability, faked out the entire team, as you said. Extra point attempt from Richardson up and good. So the Huskies strike again. It is now 20 to nothing early in the second period. As we look at that, Ash County forward drive to the end zone. Yeah, six plays, 68 yard drive capped off by the 51 yard fake punt. Uh, just great awareness out there from Mason McNeil. Be interesting to find out if Coach Hampton called that in the yeah. huddle or if Mason did that on his own, but either way, you couldn't have uh, executed that much better as a team. Great job from the Huskies and Elkin kind of fell asleep after the uh, really sold that punt did Mason McNeil and nobody even gets close to him and great job blocking from his Husky team in front of him and he just waltzes into the end zone 51 yards they're not going to pull that one off the board from him as he finds pay dirt for the first time tonight the senior wideout showing off his legs so the Huskies will line up to kick it here from their own 40 Richardson can punch this one back into the end zone for a touchback. Kick will bounce and be fielded. And a reverse here, a bit of a trickery play, and Mays has some space. It will be forced out of bounds, slung to the ground by Revis. Heads up play from the sophomore on the coverage team. And Elkin will come out first and 10, ball on their own 27-yard line. Right, as we know, the Huskies, of course, not going to get that conference title again. Already been decided uh, there, East Wilkes. But as you mentioned there, still a lot to play for tonight for the Ash County Huskies. Yeah, you can uh, finish the regular season with a winning record, something certainly to be proud of. Had a fifth win there in the conference, a 5-2 and two conference mark. Also something to be really pleased about. And, of course, the potential of a home playoff game. Uh, that's uh, really the key here for tonight for Ash. If they really want to play for something, be able to play in the playoffs at home next week. Play action pass is caught by Jalen Mays, brought down by a combo effort of Matthew Greer and Garrett Miller. Gets out across the 30. It's about just shy of the 33-yard line. Five-yard gain on that one. Second down and five. Three-score ball game now. So Huskies started imposing their will on offense, really finding that air game to their favor. Then a great conversion there on fourth down and five on the fake punt call. As we said, don't know if that was from Coach Hampton or Mason McNeil. As you said though, Nate, either way, heads up play by your senior wideout. It really is the jack of all trades there, punter and everything here for this Husky team. Little nothing gained on that one, so the third down and five. See if the Huskies can get this Elkin offense off the field once again. Throws across the middle, pass is caught. Nice stiff arm, but man, how about that? Hanging on for dear life and slinging him to the ground was Ben Brown. Yeah, Ben Brown not letting him get away on that one. And a nice job there by the defense. We'll get a, give him a first down, but still could have been a whole lot more if he'd be able to get loose. 39 yard line. And so it is going to be enough to get the first down. So move the sticks. Nice job converting on third and medium length that time. Just enough to get the first. First and 10 there in the 39. High snap. We're just able to recover. Gets the handoff to his H back, but he is going nowhere. Stuffed immediately. And we 
you see Tristan Jones there helping him up. A guy leading the charge again for the Ash County Huskies from his linebacker spot. This Husky defense keeps doing a great job against this rushing attack. Of course, having Josh Hamilton back certainly a, plays a big part in that. And uh, Luis Ramos keeps getting healthier as the season goes on. So definitely having those two big workhorses up front, that's going to help any rush defense. Call it a gain of one, so it brings up second and nine. Ball on the 40. Play action, rolling out to the far side, flips it for his man coming out of the backfield, and that's going nowhere. Nice defense just to ensure the fact that catch wasn't going to be made by Matthew Greer. They'll bring up a third and eight here. Elkin needs another key third down conversion to keep this drive going. Looking it through here in the second quarter. Huskies in control right now, 20 to nothing. Nice to see them getting some points up on the board after only tallying six against Starmount. And third and long, they're going to have to throw. Flags are down. And this throw falls well short of the intended man. Just had to get, had to get rid of it there, did Bo Burgess, the quarterback. And it's going to be going against the Huskies. 15-yard penalty there, personal foul on the face mask. We saw a lot of pushing going on there on that offensive line. Those guys working hard. I believe they may have tagged uh, Ramos on the right side of the offense, or excuse me, the defensive line for the Huskies. And Elkin, they'll take it. So that'll move it into Husky territory with a fresh set of downs. Elkin has it now at the 47, 46 yard 46 yard line, first and 10. Huskies doing a good job so far pitching the shutout, Nate, but uh, it made it interesting here with all these penalties we've seen thrown in the first half. Yeah, that's uh, really been what's held the Huskies back from absolutely just uh, putting Elkin down early, but Elkin able to uh, keep going even with these penalties helping them out, but their oh. offense has got to find something. They can't, uh, they can't score on penalties, so they've still got to find something else uh, besides these Husky penalty yards. There we see a nice ball delivered from Burgess, but maybe just a step or two in front of his man. Looking for Jonah Christian up the near sideline. Got a hand on it, but couldn't reel that one in. As they're looking to catch the Husky defense napping there, but falls incomplete. It'll make it second down and 10. Center is Burgess in the I formation. He'll hand it off to the H back Altmuller. But not much doing there. Gets maybe a yard or two on the play. So that's going to bring up a third down and nine situation for Elkin ball on the Husky 45 yard line. See if the Huskies can do what they do best with this shutout going tonight. Maybe most importantly on another third and long, stay penalty free here for Ash County. Yeah, that's been the key. That's kept a few uh, Elkin drives going with some penalties and uh, also cost the Huskies some points. So, uh, so far the, the officials just haven't been kind to the Huskies. Third and long, Burgess rolling out, eyeing that far sideline, pass is caught. And how about that conversion? Christian hangs on to that one. And heady play there, gets across that marker for the first down. Yeah, nice little throw and catch there, able to keep this drive going. Nice third down conversion. And once again, they're uh, inching closer to that Husky red zone. Of course, the last couple times not able to get there, saw the Husky defense uh, just really clamp down and keep them from getting any more yards than what they've already gotten. So a fresh set of downs at the Husky 35. Okay, looking to reach pay dirt for the first time this evening. Find themselves trailing by three scores. Play action, bootlegs out of the near side, pass is caught, but nothing else is gonna be gained. A great stop. Leading the charge there is Matthew Greer. Sam Henson in on that tackle as well. Little to nothing gained there. Call it pickup of a couple. Second down and eight upcoming. Four and a half now to play in this second period. So far, so good for Ash County. Handoff goes up the middle that time to Altmuller. He's 
found a, a tough go here. Tonight up that middle, Husky's not giving an inch. Yeah, this Husky rush defense, uh, they've gotten better each and every week. Maybe a little bit of a, a lapse last week against Starmount, but so far tonight, uh, Elkin able to get nothing really going on the ground at all. So he picked up about two on the play. So third and seven on the 32 of the Huskies. Shifting guys around here, both sides. Now they're set and get the shotgun snap off. Fires across the middle. That one is tipped. And nice job there breaking up that pass by Ben Brown. Fourth down upcoming here for Elkin. Really here now, Nate, even not with seven yards to go. You're kind of in no man's land if you're Elkin, too far out for a field goal. Not sure what kind of kicking game they have, but uh, you're not in the best of situations either. Not far enough back to punt. So you got to go for it here, especially with the three-score deficit, but it's not going to be easy with seven yards to go. Yeah, really nothing to lose here, though. Uh, if, they keep, if they keep the drive going, great. If not, uh, send that defense back out there and try to keep the score the way it is. Throws off his back foot, and that one drops to the ground. Incomplete pass. And another turnover on downs for the Elkin Bucking Elks. The Huskies do enough to get the stop, but hang on, we do have another flag on the field. That's going to be false start. Of course, the penalty will be declined. It will be Husky football first and 10 on their own 32. So the defense makes their stand. And we'll see if the offense can get another touchdown on the board before we head to the halftime break. Huskies leading 20 to nothing, looking to make it more. See if they get, look to give the ball to Sullivan at all. I've yet to see them call his number. His first game back after a couple week absence due to a concussion. And there he does, gets his ball. And stumbles ahead there, tripped up. Just past the line of scrimmage and falls forward, gets about four yards. Good to see him back out here for the Huskies. He's a big guy coming out of the backfield. Yeah, it's definitely good to see him back, get a few carries. Uh, try to get his feet wet, especially for uh, really getting ready for next week's playoff game. Uh, he adds a whole another weapon to this offense. When you spread them out, you can hand it to him in the backfield. Uh, that's uh, 200 pounds going forward. That's tough to stop. And this one thrown just a bit behind of Mason McNeil, and he can't compensate. And that one falls for an incomplete pass. So quickly, another third down for Ash County here tonight. We'll see if they can convert another one on third down and six. Seen a few drops tonight from McNeil, a little uncharacteristic from him. You know, you just see him have this many drops. Third down and six, and Ellis throwing into traffic. Boy, he was lucky that one was not intercepted by his counterpart, Bo Burgess. Now that's going to go down incomplete again, and nothing going for the Huskies that time, three and out. And on fourth down and seven, we'll see them punt it away, or will we? See if Mason McNeil can pull another. <laughs> Grab it out of his hat. Yeah, you know the Elkin coaches over there reminded him of what happened last time this situation was up there. About the same spot on the field, too. And he thinks about it, but then he does boot this one away, and it will roll out of bounds on the near sideline. It's spotted about the Elkin 34-yard line. And they'll come back onto the field here on offense. First and 10, McNeil. A little unhappy there, thought he got hit at the end of that play unnecessarily. And you can hear the boo birds coming out from this Husky crowd. So, no laundry on the field and 246, we'll see Elkin go back to work. Still plenty of time for them to try to crack that scoring column tonight. And cut into this Husky lead right now. 20 to nothing where we stand. A little under three minutes to play in this opening half of football tonight at Ash County High School. It is senior night. Glad to bring it to you here on Sky Zone Sports. First down play, play action. But man, he was looking there for number nine, Jalen Mays, and the Huskies were able to just knock that one to the turf. Yeah, I saw a couple of linemen come through there to lead the charge to tip that one away. 
Yep, and got a 2.42 here on the clock. Could really use a touchdown to be able to cut into this deficit, get a little momentum on their side. But, you know, the Husky defense, they're hoping to keep this shutout going. So it'll be second down and 10. Ball on the Elkin 34-yard line. Elks are looking to come in here and steal one at Ash County High School tonight. Well, Miller still fighting his way forward. Will be wrapped up eventually after picks up about three or four yards. But it's going to bring up a third and long situation for the Elks. Not where you want to be if you're Coach Scott Wood in this Elkin offense. We've seen him complete a few passes downfield to pick up some key first downs, but not something you want to continue to do when you like to run the football. It's going to approach the two-minute mark. Third down and seven, fires it to the near side. High throw, and that one's going to be over the intended target. Who's looking in the way of Jonah Christian once again. And that'll be an incompletion. And we'll see if they choose to punt this one away. Ball on their own. 37 yard, excuse me, 38 yard line. Fourth down and seven. And they're still trying to figure things out, what they're gonna do on the Elkins side of things. So we see Levi Edwards into the sideline. Low snap, able to recover, gets off a short kick and Takes a nice bounce, but goes out of bounds. Probably a little quicker than what they would have liked. And the Huskies had pretty good field position here, Nate. Ball on their own 38. 159 on the clock. Still plenty of time for this air eight offense to strike. Oh, yeah. Won't, won't take long at all if they're uh, clicking on all cylinders out there. Uh, we'll see if Elkin can try to get another stop here and keep the deficit the way it is to go to the halftime break. Last time we saw the Huskies forced into a three and out situation to straighten it back out after they scored on three straight possessions. They came up empty on their first offensive drive of the ball game. Ellis looking to air this one all the way. Throwing on the run to the far sidelines. Got McNeil and he'll just cruise on out of bounds. It's a nice game there. First down and gets it into Elkin territory as well. Yeah, nice first down play. Just took uh, eight seconds off the clock there and already into Buck and Elk territory. Marked him out at the 46-yard line where it'll be Husky first down. Inside of two minutes, clock will reset. The chains are moved. Four wide set, twins to the left and right, but hold everything. So we had some early movement once again from that Ash County squad. False start is called, five-yard penalty. In fact, the Huskies to their side of things on the 49. First and 15 now for the Ash County Huskies. A lot of penalties throughout the first half here tonight. So far though, the Huskies still feeling pretty good up 20 to nothing. Under a lot of pressure is Ellis throwing it on the run and it's caught. Mason McNeil now makes a nice cutback. He's in the middle, 20-10. He will be wrapped up by Christian, but how about that move by Mason McNeil after an outstanding catch? And I thought that throw was about to be picked off. It really hung up in the air for a while. Uh, but Mason McNeil right there on the spot to catch it and picks up some yards after the catch. Uh, first and goal for the Huskies. Cruises all the way down to the five-yard line. As you said, first and goal, Ash County. Purple and silver looking to tack on six more before they head to the intermission. Clock rolling inside a minute and a half. High snap, gets the handoff to Sullivan, and the big man is rewarded with the touchdown. Yeah, welcome back, Sky Sullivan. We've seen uh, both the key parts of our offense that have been out uh, here lately now come back and score a touchdown, and Sky Sullivan there pounds that one in from about five yards out. Five-yard run up the middle from the junior tailback as we look at that one on the Mountain Outfitters replay. Nothing too fancy there. Just lowers that head and the shoulders. Plows his way in for six more. 26 to nothing now in favor of the Huskies, pinning the extra point, snap the hold, and the kick is up and good. So 27 to nothing at the 113 mark in favor 
of the Ash County Huskies taking advantage there once again of that, uh, we'll call it a little bit of a porous secondary for Elkin and make some pay after that big catch for Mason McNeil. Uh, nothing too fancy on that last play though, just good old fashioned uh, halfback dive up the middle by Sky Sullivan. Yeah, it took just 46 seconds there, three plays, 62 yards. And Scott Sullivan caps it off there with that touchdown run. Ash takes a 27 to zip lead, minute 13 left in the ball game, or in the first half, I should say. It's a husky strike there, as you said. They have uh, struck a little too quickly there. They still leave some time here for Elkin with 113 on the clock. So you know they'll be gunning to get points on the board and cut this thing back to a three score ball game. But the Huskies really taking control now, Nate. 27 zip. Yeah, Elkins in a really big hole. They certainly didn't want to be in against a team at the caliber of Ash County. And we'll see what they've got in the second half. Certainly have to change up something. Uh, figure out a way to get their defense to be able to uh, defend this pass a little bit better. Kick off the turn. Gets out to about the 20 yard line before he's dogpiled upon there. It was the return man. And we'll see them start off again, Elkin. First and 10 from their 19. So if the Huskies hold things out here, go into halftime with a shutout. Defense so far tonight, Nate's been up to the task. Yeah, the Husky defense really bouncing back from last week, giving up a couple long touchdown runs. Uh, but they're really batting it down here against Elkin. See if they can keep it going for uh, another minute four here and then uh, another second half, see if they can get a shutout. And off inside. Alt Mueller again on the carry. Little to nothing doing there. When you look back at that Star Mount game, they would talk about, you know, they gave up the big plays, but still surrendering 16 points. You know, with the Huskies normally potent offense, that's more than enough to get the job done as far as uh, getting a win. Unfortunately for them, Star Mount was just as great on defense especially when it got down in that red zone. Yeah, their defense, uh, nobody really talks a whole lot about that Ram defense this year, but uh, we've seen them do a good job against some key teams this year. And uh, just against the, against the Huskies, they really had their number getting pressure on Ellis and uh, good secondary coverage as well. Brooks stood up and slung back by big Luis Ramos, number 65 of the Huskies. Looks like Elkin, they just content to go into halftime with Score standing at 27 to nothing as it'll roll on down inside at 10 seconds now. Yeah, Coach Wood obviously just wants to get this thing to the half and uh, try to regroup here and see if he can get a whole different team to come out ready to play in the third quarter. And we have hit zeros at Ash County High School. So far so good for Ash County on senior night pitching a shutout. 27 to nothing, a lot to like here for the Ash County Huskies. Of course, we know Scott Wood's gonna try to make those halftime adjustments. If you coach Hampton, Nate, I guess uh, that the only thing you can knock is being a little more uh, heads up out there and not surrendering those penalties. Yeah, those penalties have uh, cost the Huskies even more points out here and uh, kept a few Elkin drives alive that probably shouldn't have been. Uh, but still, it's, it's awful tough to complain up 27 to zip, especially here on senior night. Try to send these seniors out with a, a nice highlight win. Once again, like what we're seeing so far from the Ash County side of things, we'll give it up to the halftime entertainment here on senior night at Ash County High School. 27 to nothing, your score. Ash County with the lead and looking to keep it going here. We'll have second half action after the halftime entertainment from Ash County High School. Stay tuned for more Friday night football on Sky Zone Sports. Ash County Ford here. It's time to make the switch to Ash County Ford. With $1,000 trade-in cash available, the time is now. Make the switch and save up to $9,500 off the 14 F-150s. Take a break. Come in and see the new redesigned 2015 F-150. With an all-aluminum body and tons of new features, Ford has done it again. Come see why Ash County Ford sold the most certified pre-owned Fords in the region last year. With 100,000 miles powertrain warranty, 24-hour roadside assistance, and low rates, you can't go wrong. Ash County Ford. We don't just sell you a car, we make you a friend for life. Ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, please welcome the 2015 Husky Vanguard Marching Band under the direction of Zach Fulbright. The field is under the command of Dakota Little and Journey Ward tonight. They'll be performing this year's award-winning show entitled Sibling Rivalry, sponsored by West Jefferson Chevrolet. Featuring the songs Meet the Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, The Pink Panther, and The Wizard of Oz. 
Recently, the marching band competed at the Avery High School Marching Invitational, winning first prize in the category of music, drum major, percussion, front ensemble, and general effect. They also received the award for overall first place in Class 3A. Drum majors, Dakota Little, is the band ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Husky Vanguard Marching Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will recognize the seniors of the 2015 Ash County Husky Vanguard Marching Band. First, I'd like to introduce Matt Blevins. Matt has his parents, Kim Blevins and Tony Blevins, tonight. Matt enjoys hanging out with friends as frequently as possible and sleeping in between. He hopes someday to go to college and enjoy every friend he makes along the way. He has a favorite quote, be the change you want to see in the world. We also have Jared Richards, parents Shanda and Robert Richards. Jared enjoys dancing, rapping, acting, composing music, sleeping, eating, you know the rest. He plans to be a dancer or dropping a mixtape with his best buddy, Mr. Fulbright. He also might start a waffle company. He believes in not changing so people will like you. Be yourself, and the right people will love the real you. We also have Luke Roten tonight. His parents, Robert and Donna Roten. He enjoys playing the trumpet video games, having a great time with his friends, including Austin. He someday hopes to go to Western Carolina to study forensic science. We have Haley Graham. Daughter of Alan Graham and Allison Powers, she enjoys spending time with the ones she loves, sleeping and listening to music. She hopes someday to attend Western Carolina University and figure the rest out from there. She has a special message to her trumpet babies. I believe in you guys. Good luck, Austin. And to Emily, you're my barbecue and always will be. To Nate Denny from Carol and Travis Denny. <laughs> Her parents, Carol and Travis Denny. Nate enjoys backpacking, kayaking, listening to music, driving, and shooting sports. He plans someday to attend a four-year college for pre-medical studies and then go to John Hopkins University for medicine. His favorite quote is, nothing in this world worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. I never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. That from Theodore Roosevelt. We have Nathan Trent out there tonight with parents Lori and Will Trent. Nathan enjoys drumming, gaming, hanging out with friends and loved ones, and sleeping a lot. He someday hopes to attend Western Carolina University and major in music education. His favorite quote comes from Mr. Fulbright himself. There are things you shouldn't do, but sometimes you have to do those things. Jordan Domingue out there tonight. With Jeremiah Domingue and Jennifer Holman. Jordan enjoys playing the guitar and the drums, reading and jamming with his band. He plans to attend Mars Hill University to obtain a degree in music performance and pursue a career in music. His favorite quote is, Doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. Dakota Little, our drum major there tonight. Daughter of Jeanette and David Little. Dakota enjoys hiking, hanging out with her best friend Leanne and the band. She plans to attend Western Carolina to major in environmental science and eventually grow taller than five feet. Her favorite quote, people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do, from Isaac Asimov. Raven Poplin out there tonight, accompanied by Amy Miller. Raven enjoys playing the drums, listening to music, and practicing with the band. His future plans are to study music education and performance at Mars Hill University, and then teach and perform. His favorite quote from Mr. Edgar Allan Poe, quote the Raven, nevermore. <laughs> Bowen Green with his parents, William Green, Jennifer Green, and his sister, Hope Farmer. He hopes someday, or his hobbies enjoy are video games, playing music, drawing, studying science, watching anime, and spending time with friends on free days and weekends. His future plans are to go to college and study respiratory therapy. Bowen's favorite quote, no matter how far it is to the top, it is still within my grasp. Dylan Harris out there tonight with Mason Harris Sr., Tracy Howe, Chrissy Harris, and John Howe. Dylan enjoys writing, gaming, spending time with friends, and someday plans to attend three colleges for a doctorate in literature and to publish the, his first book. His favorite quote, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. 
Also tonight, we got Tyler Slayton with Nicholas and Michelle Slayton. Tyler enjoys playing video games, building and dismantling computers, studying history, and working on computer programs. He plans someday to pursue a computer science degree at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. His quote tonight from himself, Jordan Reedy, question mark? Leanne Richardson with Alma Richardson, Reggie Richardson, her brother, and Logan Richardson. Leanne likes cooking, hiking, playing music, sewing, taking care of chickens, and hanging out with her best friend, Dakota. Leanne plans someday to go to Wilkes for two years, then transfer to North Carolina State to become an agriculture teacher. So her plans, though, might change by the end of the week. No way of knowing. Her favorite quote, one good thing about music is when it hits you, you feel no pain and love the life you live and live the life you love from Mr. Bob Marley. Claire Liska, our next senior tonight with Kathy and Jim Liska. Claire enjoys reading, listening to music, cooking and baking, hanging out with her family and friends. She plans someday to attend a four-year university and later earn an MD to specialize in emergency room medicine. Her favorite quote is a long one from The Two Towers by Samwise Gamgee. Just, there's some good in this world, and it is worth fighting for. Kenzie Bear is out there, too, tonight, with Lisa and Alan Bear. Kenzie enjoys the color guard, shooting, and spending time with her friends. She plans to go to ETSU, become a flight nurse, and she has a word of wisdom tonight. Never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Our last senior tonight is Mr. Jordan Reedy with Joyce Reedy, Stanley Reedy, and sister Megan Reedy. Jordan enjoys playing video games, cooking, watching baseball, loving his girlfriend, and obsessing, obsessing over corgis. He plans someday to move to Charlotte and pursue a degree in the culinary arts and restaurant management at Johnson Wales University. His favorite quote from himself, Tyler Slayton, exclamation point. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2015 Husky Vanguard Marching Band seniors, parents, and other supporting personnel. G LTE is here from Carolina West Wireless. It's the fastest 4G data service available today, so you can enjoy downloads faster and send uploads without the wait. So bring on the apps and bring on the entertainment and get ready for life at the speed of you. Visit your Carolina West Wireless store today and find out more about our new 4G LTE network, new products and rate plans. Good evening, welcome back into Ash County High School Senior Night at ACHS. As we look to wrap up the 2015 regular season campaign, Huskies hosting the Bucking Elks of Elkin, and after the first half, it is all Ash County Huskies, as we see on the Miller Insurance scoreboard. 27 to nothing as Richardson puts his big foot into this one, and that will take a bounce and roll to the sideline, but finally we'll go out there, rule it, but barely. So it'll go out of bounds, drawing the flag. So Elkin will have some nice field position to start off this third quarter of action. And the way things stand right now, Nate, they're going to need all the help they can get. Yeah, they're going to have to find some offense and find it pretty quickly here to start the third quarter uh, with this Husky defense. Uh, they pretty much shut down anything that Elks have tried to do. Uh, but at the same time, Elkin, they've struggled with about anything Ash has done. So if they want to get back in this game, they're going to have to find a lot of uh, positives on the offensive side and be able to stop that Husky offense on defense. So they'll come out onto the field, Will Elkin, first and 10 on their own 35-yard line on the short end of the stick right now, 27 to nothing as we get off the first play from scrimmage. Altmuller, more of the same from what we saw in the first, bottled up by that Husky defensive front and a great job by them holding their ground on that opening play to set the tone in this second half. Yeah, Ash just keeps crashing down inside, and they're going to make Elkin do something else besides running up the gut to beat them. And so far, Elkin has not been able to do that. They have completed a few passes here and there, but uh, we haven't seen them try to run it outside hardly any at all. And the few plays they have, the Husky defense, uh, they've stretched it out nicely as well. Second down and 10. Trying to spread it out here in the shotgun set. The toss throw to the outside. Brooks hangs on. Gets out 
Out of bounds, forced out around the 40 yard line. It's about five yards. So quickly, Nate, right here, staring a hole into a third and five situation are the Bucking Elks. And they gotta keep this drive going. I really just can't afford to have them three and out on their first drive to open the half. We'll see if they uh, try to pound it ahead, try to pick up five, or if they'll stick to the air, which is pretty much the only thing that's been working for them this evening. And Burgess throws across the middle, pass is caught, and slinging him down to the ground. We've seen him make a couple of nice plays. That's Ben Brown. And that's going to bring up a fourth down quickly for the Elks. Yeah, Hayden Brooks looked like he lost about a yard on that. Not, uh, not what the Elkin had in mind at all on that crossing pattern, but for the Huskies, a great stand. It's a quick three and out here. Force Elkin in here to punt. So Huskies lining up to return. As you know, Coach Hampton there was had to be beating it into the head of Matthew Greer. Keep your eyes on the ball if you're going to go out there and return these kicks. See McNeil as the deep man back, and it will be blown dead after it took an Ash County bounce after it was all said and done by uh, McKinley Cheek there downing it at the Husky 36-yard line. They'll come back out onto the offense looking to keep things rolling, putting up 27 points in that first half. Big, bit of a slow start as we mentioned there, but really got things rolling to close out the first quarter, and that momentum certainly carried into the second. Yeah, and really could be even more points with the, the two touchdowns they had called back on penalties. So this Husky offense really picking up nicely, getting a couple of key pieces back. And uh, this Elkin defense is really no answer in the first half. I uh, see what uh, Coach Wood wanted to change up here in the second half, see if he can get uh, some different results. How about this look from the Huskies? No back, set, and the pass broken up by Altmuller. He was looking for how and uh, also number 14, Branson Shepard in the area for Ellis. That's something that they saw last week and had some success with against Elkin was that no back set, and they like to pull it out there and go five wide. Yeah, and uh, you see Coach Hampton coming out with a, with a little bit of a, a change up here in their game plan as well. So see if they've caught Elkin off guard again and not Elkin not knowing exactly what to do with uh, this five wide out grouping. Snap to Ellis. Feeling the heat, sidesteps one defender, launches a bomb deep downfield, and the catch is made by McNeil, but he was out of bounds. It was so close there. I mean, he almost got a foot in, but uh, a little bit out of bounds. Yeah, great effort there from the senior wideout. We've seen him make more than his fair share of highlight catches at Ash County High School. And, you know, Nate, we've had a lot of great players come through Ash County High School, but uh, Mason McNeil, he's really been one of a kind. We've never quite seen an athlete at the wideout position such as he. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got good height and good speed, and uh, he's been a, a real asset to this program. And uh, as you said, maybe maybe one of the, the best wideouts we've seen in quite a while. I know Grayson Wells have something to say yeah. about that as well, but uh, Mason really, uh, I think, really helps him look good on plays like this when they throw the ball so much. It helps the stats look a little better, but uh, still Mason, just a tremendous athlete and uh, typically good hands, and uh, we all know he can make the play on the ball. And on cue, as you said it, makes a nice catch there. And Nice chunk of yardage after the fact. Gets it into Elkin territory down at the 42-yard line. A fresh set of downs for the Huskies. Certainly one of many seniors that will be missed here at Ash County High School going into next season. But we've still got football here this year. And you never know, Huskies might make a run in the playoffs. Hopefully a lot of football as we see McNeil unable to reel that one in on a similar play call. So that'll go down as incompletion. And you know, you talk about it since the Huskies go to this air raid offense, adjustments that are made, and uh, despite you know what they're going to do, defenses still just have trouble locking up those defenders, especially in the secondary. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just tough to defend that much space and uh, that many good athletes that the Huskies can uh, throw out at you. They've got you know, five wideouts out here, and you know, all five of them pretty good athletes. So you don't really miss a beat from, from Mason O'Neill on down to the freshman, uh, Branson Shepard out there. So. It's just tough to defend. And how about that catch that is hauled in by McNeil all the way down at the 20-yard line. will put the Huskies in red zone territory once again. First and 10 for the Huskies right on the 20-yard line. Liking what we're seeing this drive from this air raid offense. Working to perfection on that play. Five wide all the way for Ash County so far on this drive. 
tack on more points already with the 27-0 lead. Ellis, there's a beautiful pass to a wide open Grant Thompson, and he hangs on in the end zone. Touchdown, purple and silver. And that's a great play design there. You saw two Elkin guys stick with uh, Simon Happ there on the short route, but uh, let Grant Thompson get wide open deep. And the sophomore reels in a nice touchdown grab to add on to this lead. Look at that one on the Mountain Outfitters replay. You can get great shots just like that if you grab yourself a GoPro at Mountain Outfitters in West Jefferson, located downtown, as well as all your outdoor needs. Mountain Outfitters in downtown WJ, extra point. Upcoming for the Huskies, good snap, good hold, and a good kick as well. The boot from Kendall Richardson tacks on one more. 34 to nothing now at the 9-10 mark as we look at that. Ash County forward drive to the end zone. Six plays, 64 yards, took a minute 19 off the clock, and Colin Ellis completes that 20-yard uh, touchdown pass to Grant Thompson. Kim Richardson's extra point puts it 34 uh, to zip for Ash. Elkin, uh, just a huge hole to be in right now. And so far, they haven't shown any offensive ability to be able to come back from a deficit like this. And a great catch there from Grant Thompson. Still learning this wideout position this season. Of course, by now, he's more than just a first-year wideout the last game of the regular season. But always nice to see him make a good grab. He's developed into a very nice weapon as well for this Ash County offense, uh, away from his natural position of quarterback. Yeah, he's uh, really kind of adapted to that wide receiver position nicely. He's, he's made a few uh, tough grabs this year and uh, able to hang on to that easy throw there and get him a touchdown. Richardson on for the kickoff. After another Husky score. Puts us up at 34 to nothing in favor of the purple and silver. And the kickoff mishandled by Jalen Mays. Trying to recover, and it's not going to work out for him. Just gets across the 10-yard line. I'll tell you, Nate, this Husky special teams, they're really having nose for that football here, especially tonight, it seems. Yeah, it's just been a good all-around effort from all facets of the game for the Huskies, but uh, special teams tonight, they did have the, uh, the miscue on the punt earlier, but the fake punt touchdown, the way they've covered these kicks, uh, it's something that Coach Hampton really has to be pleased about when you get good execution at all three aspects of the game. I was going to say, that's something that a lot of times gets lost when you look at the facets of the game. People focus, you know, what are you doing on offense and defense, but special teams, I mean, that's a third of the game. And it's very important to be very good on that end as well as on offense and defense. And the Huskies tonight showing it, as you said, three for three here with their effort tonight. Hand off up the middle. Not much going for him there. And this has been the story all night long for Elkin. To no avail, that middle being clogged up. You would think by now they might try to go a little bit different direction, maybe try some misdirection on the handoffs or some sweeps to the outside. But uh, not seeing a lot of mix up in the play call, the running plays that is, here from the Bucking Elks up to this point in the ball game. They call it a gain of three on that previous play, makes it second down and seven now for Elkin. Play action, looking to mix it up a bit, toss to the outside, and oh my goodness, unloading on him is Matthew Greer. Yeah, that play was going nowhere, even if he would have held on to that throw, but uh, nice hit there by Greer. Alexander Duncan, a little slow to get up, and he quickly heads to the sideline, replaced by Altmuller. He might feel that one tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's a no doubt hit right there. That's something you're definitely gonna, you're gonna remember that one the next day. Brings up a third and seven, more importantly, for the Huskies after the incomplete pass. 8.15 remaining in the third period. What has been a blowout. Burgess rolls out, throws it to the far sideline, well in front of Christian. And it's going to be another three and out situation here for Elkin. Slim pickings on the offensive side for them. And their struggles throughout the season just continue in here tonight and have really been exemplified firsthand. You're getting a look at, uh, you know, why this team has struggled. They have done some nice things, but with their youth, Nate, just not as disciplined as you see a veteran squad such as the Huskies. The, the players from last year are uh, just not there this year for Elkin. Uh, not quite the same athletic ability, not quite the same skill. And uh, I mean, I'm sure some of it will come as they get older, as they mature more into the varsity system, but uh, right now just uh, not, not happening for them. Well, hey, now, here we have another Puff that was mudded, punt, excuse me, that was mudded, that I muffed. 
Hey, <laughs> Nate, I can't even talk now. I'm going to get it right here in a second. That's been a long evening already. <laughs> the punt mishandled there. I'll just change the vocabulary all together uh, by Mason McNeil. It appears he was able to recover. Uh, similar to the one we saw mishandled by Matthew Greer earlier in the ball game. Uh, Nash County able to fall on it. Battle for the ball on the ground there. Won by McNeil. You see the Huskies come onto the field. Not going to go with the five wide set. As at this juncture in the game, we might just see them content to pound it on the ground. Some, and of course they do here with Sky Sullivan getting a nice carry. Slips past a couple of defenders and then is slung forward. He's got the first down, it appears. He's right at the marker. And we've seen him carry the ball at three or four times tonight and every time getting positive yards and also has a touchdown to his credit. Yeah, they're going to mark that one a gain of 11. Uh, picks up a first down right away and into Elkin territory. Great to see the junior tailback back in action. He's at six feet and about 200 pounds. He's a load and looking and breaking away here. He's got the first down and a few extra to be sure. Picks up about 15, 16 yards. So two huge carries for Sky Sullivan to crank off this drive. Yeah, as you said a few minutes ago, they'll just probably try to stick to this rushing attack and uh, drain the, the remaining minutes off of this clock, 7.25 and counting here in the third quarter. As Ellis lines his team up, first and 10 on the 27. Bad snap this time, it's a high one. Ellis recovers and he's gonna keep, keep it himself and dances down close to the 20 yard line. He'll get about six, seven yards on the carry. But we do see some laundry on the field as penalty marker down about the 27, 28 yard line. So at the line of scrimmage, probably gonna be a hold and that is indeed the call. They go against the Huskies. So 10 yards from the spot of the foul and we'll redo the down. Big loss there for Ash County. Backs him up to the 37-yard line of Elkin. Hey, as we start thinking playoffs here, they are the last week of the season. What do you think the Huskies need to work on the most as we enter here into the upcoming rounds of the state playoffs? Well, we've definitely seen more times than just tonight. We've seen uh, points taken off the board with penalties, big plays taken off the board with penalties. I think that would be my number one thing if I were Coach Hampton, try to uh, play a little bit more disciplined football out there. Don't uh, beat yourselves up with penalties. Once you get to the playoffs, I mean, everybody's pretty, a pretty good football team out there. You're not going to have games against teams that are 1-9, and 1-10, things like that. You're going to be playing a good team every night. And there we see, speaking of flags, Nate, another one comes out, delay of game against the Huskies. So backs them up another five yards to the 42. First and 25 now as we approach the midway mark in this third quarter. Maybe they just want to open it up on offense here. Ellis, all kinds of time. Deep ball down the middle and it's picked off over McNeil. And now the return from Christian. He's got some space out across the 30 and the 35. And he's, no, shrugs off Ellis as the last man to beat. And man, what a great job closing after the fact by Simon Houck. But man, what a return after that pick from Christian. That was a good return. I think they're going to get a block in the back back here. It looked like uh, Sky Sullivan all set to make a tackle. He just got drilled in the back. I think I saw a flag fly on that one. Indeed, we do see it. And there is the official call, block in the back. That's always dangerous throwing across the middle. And the defense made him pay that time for Colin Ellis. Yeah, that's one of the few throws we've seen from Ellis. Just, uh, just off the mark tonight, that one. Uh, sailed a little bit on him there, he ends up in an interception. And uh, nice play from the Elkin defense. Not a whole lot to be happy about tonight on that side of the football, but hey, anytime you can get the other team off the field, uh, coach staff going to be pretty pleased with that. So, clock will be stopped exactly midway through this third quarter. 34 to nothing, our score in favor of the Huskies in a big way tonight. So they turn the ball over, but Elkin going to have their backs against it as after the penalty, the block in the back, they'll have it on their own 12-yard line to kick off this drive. First and 10. <laughs> line up in a four-wide shotgun set. Alt Mueller joining Burgess in the backfield. Play action. 
Going for the lob down the field. Passes, oh, in and out of the hands of Christian. So right after he makes a pick on defense, he drops a great catch right around the 40-yard line. That'd have been a 30-plus yard gainer right there with only Sam Hudler to beat. Instead, it goes down as an incomplete pass, so the troubles continue for this Elkin team. Yeah, this offense just struggled pretty much all over the field tonight. They have completed a few passes and they got a couple of decent runs, but for the most part, uh, this Husky defense not allowing uh, Elkin to get anything going. Second down and 10 after the dropped pass. I-53 on the clock as he hands this one off to Brooks. And he's going to be slung down after about a gain of five. Tristan Jones and Matthew Greer are in on the action. Getting their hands dirty for the Huskies on that play. Just going to spot him a few extra yards there. That's what I initially thought. He's going to get it out there to... 15 yard line. Third down and seven upcoming. As we have a timeout on the field. Coach Scott Wood takes the TO here midway through this third period. It is a Littles Health and Fitness Center timeout. Littles Health and Fitness reminding you to take time out of your day. Get active and Head on down to Little's Gym, located on Radio Hill in West Jefferson. So Nate, I guess Coach Wood here, not happy with what he's seen, of course, from his squad tonight, facing another third and seven. What do you think he's going to draw up here offensively? Well, he's definitely using it as a, as a teaching moment. Anytime you can kind of pull your team aside, let them know what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. He's going to try to draw something up here, try to get a first down, keep this drive going. But for the most part, you know, he's over there trying to keep their heads in the game. It's a 34-point deficit. It's kind of hard to stay focused out there, and, you know, he wants his team to, to finish out this game and keep fighting strong. Yes, yeah, Coach Wood, definitely a competitor, sort of a no-nonsense guy. He's all about business, getting a chance to meet with him last year in the preseason show. He was only focused on Elkin football. He didn't care much about what other teams were doing. He knows he's got a job at hand and trying to do the best he can. Here we see a pass that is caught. Fighting out near the first down and picking it up. How about that play by Jalen Miles after the catch? Excuse me, Mays after the catch. Yeah, Mays just a sophomore, good size out there. Six foot, 160 pound uh, receiver. It'll be a nice weapon that Elkin will have for another couple of years. It'll be interesting to see uh, if they keep him at wide receiver, maybe move him into the backfield, see what they do with him. But a uh, good athlete, he's one of the, the few bright spots they've had tonight. We've seen him get open, we've seen him make some good plays in coverage too. As we said, the future is going to be pretty bright here in another year or two for Elkin. A lot of sophomores getting valuable experience this season on the field. Even in a losing effort, it still reps at the varsity level going up against the best of competitions. We see the handoff to the left side going to Wade Wagner. He's going to be snuffed out after about three-yard gain on the play, two or three. And while we're kind of in forward thinking mode now, Nate, I know we've seen some you know, preliminary brackets if things hold up here as they are right now, entering the final week of play across North Carolina. What does the future hold as of now? Does it look like for the Ash County Huskies as we enter the playoffs? I think most people feel pretty confident if they can uh, get a win tonight, they may very well end up with the home game. We'll have a tiebreaker over uh, Wilkes Central since we beat them head to head. Uh, should end up getting a home game. Uh, not not exactly sure who we'll end up with, but uh, it's a pretty deep 2A field this year. A lot of good, uh, solid six-win, five-win teams. I'd say this year you won't see a four-win team even make the playoffs like in years past. So it's certainly going to be a little bit tougher bracket for, for any team in there pretty much. And as we talk about not only Ash County for the entire conference, uh, looking for a strong showing this year from the Mountain Valley teams. Yeah, you've got four pretty solid teams up front that could uh, make some noise in the playoffs, especially at East Wilkes being undefeated. And uh, Star Mount, also uh, always a good team there in 1A, played for the title last year. Uh, good athletes at Wilkes Central. Of course, the Huskies 
bring a whole uh, different offensive attack. Most teams, <laughs> you know, they may not see it even uh, one or two years down the road, but uh, you bring an air raid offense in, some teams you know, don't really know how to prepare for it. We see another pass caught by number nine, Jalen Mays. Having a really nice game tonight as the sophomore wide out as he makes the catch, gets out across the 40 to the 41, and another first down for Elkin. Step back, fires it to his H back that time. Altmuller lowers the shoulder. He's a guy who's always looking for contact, Nate. He gets about four yards on the catch. Yeah, he's out there. He's not afraid to get hit. He's been used uh, pretty much just running up into the middle, trying to get some extra yards there. They put him in space and able to knock a couple guys over. Not Did not gain much, but he's certainly out there not afraid of contact. He has six foot, 190 pound one. Senior running back and middle linebacker. Quite a force to be reckoned with for Elkin. And that will see him get the workload again. As he plows up the middle, only gets about a yard. Been a tough go for him tonight. As much as he does like the contact, he's got some big bodies waiting for him on the other side, and Luis Ramos on that play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's never fun when the, other, when the other opposing defense there, they don't mind the contact either. Uh, you get some pretty, pretty hard uh, head smashing hits there in the middle of the pile. So that's going to bring up third down situation again for the Bucking Elks. Ball on their own 45, third down and six. The Huskies look to keep this shutout rolling and end this drive before they even get into their side of the field. Being pursued nicely and leveled as he unleashes the bomb. And then that pass play broken up on the other end. But man, he took a shot at the end of that play, did Bo Burgess, and he's down. That looked like a, a big time hit from Luis Ramos. He <laughs> absolutely drilled Burgess there. Uh, he, he's hurting pretty bad on that one. And we also see a flag coming in. We gotta hope he's okay, he gets up. He's walking it off. What do you think is gonna be the call here, rough in the passer maybe? I couldn't quite tell, I thought at first they pointed towards Elkins' way. Oh, you're right. So they didn't even flag the big hit and it was a holding call against Elkin. Of course that will be declined and bring up a fourth down and sixth situation for the Bucking Elks. Gotta hope that uh, Burgess is okay. He's got the helmet off and walking to the far sideline. Uh, just a sophomore there. He's got a bright future ahead of him here at Elkin High School. I mean, that Ash County defense still hungry and they even working with a 34 to nothing lead this late in the contest. Oh yeah, they'd like to get that shutout. Shutout uh, North Wilkes a couple weeks ago. They'd like to add another one here. So on comes the punting unit. It's off a good high kick. And takes a nice bounce. Will be fielded by Price. His own 15 makes a couple of moves. Needed to make one more to try to break away. He will be dropped. And we see another flag come in on the end of that one. Alexander Duncan made the stop. Number 33 for the Elks. Got about five, six yards in the return to Price. Boy, he was tripped up. Not sure what this call's going on. The referee's still having a discussion out there. Powwow on the field. It's going to go against Ash County and a holding penalty. Blocking, Blocking in the back. He's going to move the back ten yards. First and 10 now coming up from the So that'll line. mark them back to the 10 yard line, about a 10 yard penalty going against the Huskies. They'll have a long field to work with, but good news for the Ash County team. They're up 34 to nothing here with a minute 51 in the third quarter. And Ellis joined by Sullivan in the backfield. See if they let the junior tailback Carry the load again on this offensive possession. And a good hard snap count there from Ellis. Draws that defense off sides. So that'll get a few of those penalty yards back. This makes it first down and five. Moves it up to the 15 yard line for the Huskies. First and five now coming up. Under two minutes in the third quarter of play tonight. 34 to nothing ball game. Huskies has been able to run rough shot over the Bucking Elks. 
We'll see Sullivan get the carry on Sullivan first and short. The snuff there at the line of scrimmage, they'll say. Nothing doing really for the Huskies that time. No gain on that play Keep for it Ash County. five yards to go. Second down and five now Second for Ash County. Fully in control of this one. Just looking to ground and pound their way to another victory here. Close out this ball game. Keep that clock rolling. Second down and five. A swing pass to the near side. It is caught out across the 20 and the 25. Goes McNeil, and he's got the first down. McNeil on that reception brought down by Jonah Christian. That is good enough for the first down for Ash County. Keep those chains moving. Ball spotted at the 27. And a fresh set of downs as that clock, most importantly for Ash County, continues to roll. Keeps it himself on the option. Lowers his shoulder, gets a few extra yards after contact. He's gonna pick up about five, six yards on the first down carry by the QB. Brings up second down and four as we approach the 32nd mark in the third quarter. Twenty-five and counting. As Ash County just looking to take care of this football. Cruz to their sixth win of the season, fifth in conference play. And second down and four, we've got some early movement up front. That might be going against Ash County. And it will draw on that defense off sides. It was some movement up front on the side of the Huskies. Five yard penalty, backs them up to the 28 yard line, second down and nine. Second and nine coming up As the clock rolls on down, they won't even have to snap this one. And that is how we will end the third quarter of play. The Huskies found pay dirt once during that quarter, and the defense continues to pitch the shutout. 34 to nothing. We'll be back to wrap this thing up with the fourth quarter of action on Sky Zone Sports on Sky Zone HD Channel 1 right after this. When it comes to insuring your home, business, automobiles, and property, you want an agency you can depend on. Miller Insurance has been serving this region for more than 60 years and are proud to now represent Everett Cash Mutual, which specializes in insuring farm property, equipment, livestock, and more. Before you renew your insurance policies, give us a call at 336-246-7151 or come see us in downtown West Jefferson. Miller Insurance is proud to be your hometown insurance agency that supports our hometown teams. Little's Health and Fitness began in 1981. We are a 24-7, full-service, family-friendly fitness center with the finest equipment from Life Fitness, Hammer Strength, and Body Masters, as well as a great staff to help you get started. We have a 22-piece cardio area, so waiting is rarely a problem. We offer group classes for all levels, an extensive array of weights and machines, perfect for the beginner to advanced. We also have meal replacement shakes, tanning, dressing rooms with private showers, personal trainers, and child care is also available. And welcome back into Friday Night Football at Ash County High School on Senior Night as we close out the regular season. And Mountain Valley Conference play between the Elkin Bucking Elks and the host Ash County Huskies. Ash fully in control as we begin this fourth and final period. Just looking to put this from the bed up 34 to nothing. Ellis gonna go to the air, hit as he throws, and the pass is dropped. Judd Price had that one all the way. Just lost track of it there. Right in his bread basket. Great throw from Ellis, even under duress. But Price unable to do his end of the bargain. Drops it. So that's going to bring up third and nine for Ash County. Just a little bit of lapse in concentration on that throw. Probably not used to being that wide open. Yeah. Made a nice route there and came back to the ball and the curl, but unable to hang on to it. So now the Huskies facing third and long. Just a few seconds into the fourth quarter and more early movement. But Ash County draw him off sides indeed. So it's going to go against the Huskies on the false start. Back him up five more. So it's tough enough on third and nine. Now third and 14 upcoming for the Ash County Huskies as it'll back them up five yards to their own 23. So 
Chance to maybe draw up a screen play. And they just go for the home run ball. Ellis looking deep down the field. Here it comes. He's got his man open, but overthrows Judd Price, who is streaking downfield. And that's going to bring up a fourth and long, and certainly another punting situation upcoming for the Ash County Huskies. Yeah, Price uh, able to get wide open there, but I feel like he a little bit too much. Of course, up 34 0. Not going to be too upset over that throw. A little surprised there to see him take the deep shot with a 34 0 lead. Yeah, a little bit surprised. Fear they might just want to get out of here and uh, get on with the weekend, but going to keep running that offense at least for another series. And McNeil won't be able to get this one off before whistles blow this one dead. And it's going to be a timeout called on the field by the Bucking Elks. So it'll be a Littles Health and Fitness Center timeout as Coach Scott Wood chooses to take his second timeout here in the second half of tonight's contest. Littles Health and Fitness Center timeout reminding you to take time out of your day and get active. Head on down to Littles Health and Fitness Center in West Jefferson. While we do have a minute, we would like to again Thank all of our Husky football sponsors here at Sky Zone Sports, making Husky football possible for you all season long. Communications partner, Carolina West Wireless, Miller Insurance, Ash County Ford, K&K &K Stitch and Screen, Mountain Outfitters, and of course, Littles Health and Fitness Center in West Jefferson. Glad to have all of those businesses on board, bringing you the 2015 season of Ash County Husky football. Sky Zone Sports. Nate, it is hard to believe 12 weeks here. The conclusion of this one have come and gone. And uh, what do you take away most from the regular season here for Ash County? Well, I think the, they started off a little bumpy, at least in the first two or three weeks, but uh, Ash has improved and uh, keep, get, keep getting better as we oh. see a loose ball on wow. the field. so the Huskies recover. Bit of trouble there on the part of Mays. We haven't seen him make too many miscues tonight. And he's had a very nice game, but he'd like to forget about that one. Yes, yeah, a tough play there. Just backpedaling. Didn't quite backpedal far enough. And I give credit there on the punt. Uh, good air under that one and able to drive Mays back and just couldn't hang on to it. So the Huskies going to have great field position now. The Elkin 31-yard line. And, Nate, here we see some of the reserves getting some action right now. Rick Thompson in at QB. Alex Kissinger back in at tailback. Along with a host of other freshman, sophomore players, JV call-ups. There's a nice throw from Thompson. Pass is caught after a pickup about eight yards. I believe that was Caleb Cooper on the receiving end. Nice catch there by number 33. Always good to see some of these guys who put in the work there in practice and get rewarded with playing time here at the varsity level. This time they're going to hand it off to Kissinger, and he is going to be met right away, though we do see a penalty marker down. And that's going to be some movement there early from the Ash County Huskies. So that'll cost them five yards. Flag on that play. On the stop, that was Kendall Freeman, outside linebacker. So that's going to back up the Huskies. Actually, the penalty ended up being declined. So third down, about five yards to go for the first. Trying to get set on offense. And whistle here on the near side from the referee. Not sure what the deal is. We see Coach Hampton asking as well. Going out onto the field there. He just wants to keep that clock rolling. We approach the nine and a half minute mark. Ellis, excuse me, Thompson fires it deep over the head. Branson Shepard, number 14, unable to 
hauled that one in. We saw him make some nice catches last week in that game against Starmount. Had uh, four or five thrown his way, able to make three big catches for Ash County late in the ball game and uh, kept some drives alive. He's uh, gotten a chance here late in the season. He sure, certainly has not disappointed uh, at all. Saw some uh, several meaningful snaps last week as well when Ash went to the five wide set. Into the air again on fourth down, and this one is incomplete. Looking for Kissinger. Thompson slung down at the end of that play as well. Had to deliver a quick pass. Had to hurry that one a bit. Caused it to go off target. And that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Ash County Huskies. Elkin steps back out on the field on offense. They'll have the ball on their own 26-yard line. First and 10, under nine minutes to play in this ball game. Ash full control here on senior night, 34 to nothing. Good to see here, Nate, uh, these Husky seniors getting rewarded. And so far, it's been a shutout tonight. And some momentum here in the positive direction for Ash County heading into the playoffs. Yeah, one thing's for sure, you see a lot of starters still on the field. They want to get this shutout for those seniors, and a lot of those starters are seniors, in fact. So they, they want to go out there. They want to keep Elkin off the scoreboard. That handoff going nowhere, barely back to the line of scrimmage as the ball carrier. Bring up second down and 10. I think both teams at this point just have to let that clock keep on rolling down here. And get on out of here injury free, hopefully. Under eight minutes now. Shotgun snap. Burge is still in the ball game, makes a nice pass. Jalen Mays able to shake off that uh, dropped punt a few minutes ago. Makes a nice catch there, picks up about six yards. Third down and four upcoming. Boy, tough kid out there, Nate. Talk about that. Number 12, Bo Burgess, the QB. He took a shot. We know he came off the field slowly last time. Not sure if we'd see him again tonight after the big hit. But uh, there he is, man, in that quarterback spot. He wants to hang in there and try to get some points on the board for his team as he's under duress now. And is the pass intercepted? No, they're going to say it hit the turf first. But nearly an interception and another nice play regardless by Ben Brown. Yeah, this Husky defense just uh, seven minutes away for another shutout here. They played uh, pretty much a flawless evening. I'm sure, uh, you know, the coaches will find something to nitpick about over there. But uh, for the most part, this defense He's played a tremendous game. Fourth down and four now. It's a line up to punt. And ran into the kicker on the tail end of it. As it takes a nice elk and roll. Down inside the 30 will be blown dead at the 26. However, we do have that penalty marker down, of course. We saw the Huskies a little too hungry that time, Nate, trying to go for that block, ran into the kicker on the tail end. And we'll likely see Elkin remain on offense, if that is the call. So hold everything just for a moment. And reset the chains. And it's gonna be Elkin football. As they'll have a first down on their own 47-yard line. Rolling right along in this fourth period, 34 to nothing in favor of the Huskies. Five and a half minutes and counting. Urgis wanting it all. Jump ball thrown, and there we saw the receiver become a nice defender there, taking it away from Sam Hudler, who had the interception. Jonah Christian breaking that one up. He was showing off his corner ability on that one. Yeah, good coverage there from uh, Sam. Couldn't quite hang on to that interception, but uh, still all over the receiver there. That throw definitely wasn't <laughs> going to get anything downfield. So incomplete pass makes it second and 10. Still on the 47 on Elkins' side. High formation. Burgess hands it off, stood up immediately. 
Alt Altmuller. Talk about one of the key guys who's gonna have to fill some big time shoes was quarterback Colin Ellis coming into the season, Nate, and I think he's done more than his fair share. The passing completion rate, uh, maybe not exactly what you'd like to see, but it has improved as the season has progressed as we see the Burgess gonna be dropped. But uh, on the year, Nate, officially they're coming into this night. Now, of course, we don't have his totals afterward, but uh, 400 rushing yards plus with uh, nine rushing touchdowns, 22 touchdown throws against just eight interceptions and over 2,500 yards for Colin Ellis, hovering around that 50% completion rating. Uh, nice job filling the shoes of one Connor Bowers for Ellis this season. Yeah, the accuracy is something that'll, I'd say, continue to improve next year as he goes into his senior year, but uh, he's really added a whole new dimension to that quarterback spot, able to run it and uh, keep teams really off balance, but uh, in terms of the air raid, he's done exactly what uh, coaches wanted him to do. He's uh, read the defense nicely. He's just he's taking what defenses are giving him, and uh, most of the time, uh, it's pretty good safe throws out there. You see a few miscues, but for the most part, Colin Ellis just having a very great uh, junior campaign. A lot to look forward to with him at the reins next season as well. As we said, we don't want to be thinking next season yet. So Huskies going to close it out here with a nice win. Momentum in their favor going into the playoffs. Of course, last season this game meant a lot more when these two teams met as it was a battle for the top spot in the Mountain Valley Conference, which they would end up co-owning Elkin and Star Mount and Ash County. As we see another flag come out onto the field before this play gets off the ground. It's going to be a false start penalty against the Huskies, but Ash really came in here and executed and delivered with a nice victory here. Not official yet, uh, much in the same fashion as they did last year on the road. Yeah, last year's game certainly a bit more meaningful than this one, but uh, for the Huskies, winning tonight keeps them in the hopes for a, for a home playoff game, no doubt. You know, if they came in here and been upset, uh, they would have definitely been on the road and had to face a much tougher opponent. Uh, but tonight they came in, took care of business against a, a team that they should beat, and they've, uh, they're have they two minutes away from putting the, uh, the official W in the win column. But still, uh, just a great night tonight for the Huskies, and uh, we'll see how the playoff seeding shakes out. Under two minutes now, carry from Alex Kissinger. He'll get the call once again. Fights forward, makes a couple of guys miss, and a good little carry there from Kissinger. Gets about six, seven yards. Yeah, good to see the senior get some carries here late in the game. Gets some past the original line of scrimmage. Brings up third down, about eight yards to go for the first for Ash County. Third down and eight coming up now for the Huskies. So all that's left is to get the clock hit zeros. Under a minute and a half and counting now. Thompson looking to throw, finds, oh, I was going to say kiss, or excuse me, looking there to number 28. Don't have a number for him on our roster, but pass falls incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation for Ash County, but we do see another penalty marker down in the backfield. Yes, but they'll pass to our 10 flags in this one minute. Flag continues to fly. In the closing minutes of this contest. As McNeil comes on to punt this one away on fourth down. 60 and counting now. So we are into the final minute and the catch is made. Nice job hanging on there. Having to backpedal a bit. That's number 26, Dockery Sloop. And we'll see Elkin come back on on offense to finish out this contest here tonight. First down and 10 for the Elks. Ball on their 34-yard line. 49.8 seconds left. A couple of plays. And this will be in the books. Lining up in the eye are the Elks. And off to Altmuller who lowers the shoulder and met by his counterpart, number 44, 
John Revis of the Huskies. Drop there at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Second down now coming up. It'll be second down and 10. Clock winding on down. Under 20 now. As we'll likely see the final snap of the contest tonight. It'll be another run play up the gut. And I stopped there by that Husky defensive line once again. Some second unit players getting in on the action now. Good to see them out on the field. And that's going to do it here tonight. As the clock hits zeros, the Huskies pitch the shutout. And the offense does their part above and beyond. 34 to nothing is going to be our final score here tonight on senior night at Ash County High School. So another regular season in the books. The Huskies will improve to six and five. And we'll see what the future holds as far as playoffs go. Now we'll take a look here, get the final tabulations on our top performers of the night. Some unofficial stats, but uh, all in all here, Nate, we see a uh, good all around effort from Ash County, and that's not accounting of the strong play from this defensive unit, which pitches the shutout, as we mentioned. You know, Colin Ellis completes 15 of 28 passes, 326 yards, two touchdowns, also added a rushing touchdown. And uh, Mason McNeil, what else can you do? Eight catches, 162 yards. A touchdown, and of course, that uh, fake punt that turned into a about a 50, 60 yard rushing touchdown. And Joe Price in his comeback game, three grabs, 105 yards and a touchdown. Scott Sullivan found the end zone in his uh, first game back. And uh, Grant Thompson, 20 yard touchdown catch as well. Just a, a very solid performance from Ash and left a few points down the field with penalties, but 34 uh, nothing shutout. Can't be uh, too upset with that. So we don't know who the opponent will be yet, but playoff football will be coming your way here possibly at Ash County High School likely will be the site of next week's playoff round in the first round of the NCHSAA 2AA playoffs. We'll see what kind of seed the Huskies get and uh, what Lady Luck has in store of the draw and see how they match up here in the first round of the state playoffs. What are you looking forward to most as we get into the playoffs for the second year in a row here for Ash County with the home field advantage likely in their favor? Yeah, just hopefully the Huskies get a good team they can match up with. And uh, should be a, should be an interesting game. I'm sure there's a there's a lot of teams hungry to get a chance to take down this uh, air raid attack. Uh, but for the Huskies, they'd like to go two straight years, win a first round playoff game. Uh, you know, survive in advance. Got to win the first one. That's first things first. Got to get that first win to keep things going. And, uh, we'll see who who the Huskies end up with. We'll see how the Huskies match up next week. We'll be there to bring it to you. With more Friday night football. Stay tuned. It'll be playoff edition next week here on Sky Zone Sports. And the Huskies wrapping up the season on senior night with another impressive victory, getting the win again. 34 to nothing, your final. That'll do it for us here tonight. For Nathan Hamm and Corbin Richardson and everyone at Sky Zone Sports, I'm Tyler Rash. Good night, and thanks for watching.